today. Um, I am really excited that you're here. Um, business automation is something I totally geek out about. So I'm really excited to present to you these six creative ways, and they're really simple too, creative ways to use your automation in your small business. Now, I know right now with everything going on that the climate, the economy, business as we know it has all gotten a little bit strange. Uh, we've got the COVID virus out there. Many businesses are shifting from a brick and mortar business to delivery, to online, to any other avenue that they can use instead of a physical store or physical shopping presence. You may be one of those businesses that's in the shift right now, or you may be one of those businesses that is already online and you're going to see an uptick in your sales because you offer products online already. People can get to them without having to go outside and you may be seeing a real influx of business. And sometimes while we all really want to have our businesses just explode, there's growing pains with that. And things that you have in your business, your communications with your customers, your orders, your uh, tasks that you need to do, those things can be dropped pretty easily when you're super busy and especially in a growth spurt like you may be in right now. So the tricks that I'm going to show you today are designed to take some of that uh, task work and some of that busy work off of you and automate it with a great system, whatever system you use. I'm going to be showing you how we do this stuff in Keep or Infusionsoft, but these kind of plans, these strategies can be implemented in any CRM. Um, naturally, uh, I've got the Infusionsoft end of that, but if you've got questions on other CRMs and how you can implement these same things into what you're already doing, hit me up. I'm gonna show you my contact information and a way to contact me at the end of the video, or at the end of the presentation, and you are more than then welcome to contact me about anything that we've discussed here today. It doesn't have to be in the Keep platform. All right, so I've been talking now, but who am I? Um, my name is Vanessa Copley. I'm the founder of Custom Client Journey and I'm a Keep certified partner and small business consultant. I have a wonderful husband, Scott, who is a managed file transfer engineer here in Columbus, Ohio. And between us, we have four kids. My oldest is 24, and she is raising my delightful little one-year-old granddaughter. We have two 15-year-old boys, and we have a 12-year-old boy. Um, I've been working online for the past 15 years. My son, my middle son, um, one of them is autistic, and he has some issues at birth where he wouldn't feed for anybody uh, except for me. So. I was working at a siding company at that time, um, managing the office there. And I had to shift right after his birth to finding a job online. And I was able to do that. And with that new job, I started working with uh, CRMs and eventually Infusionsoft and just fell in love with business automation and the way that these tools that we have can really improve our lives. Um, so after uh, I got involved in affiliate marketing too about 10 years ago. And then after that, uh, I went on to build a successful e-commerce website where I sell supplements and some herbs that are pretty hard to find. Um, and right now I am running Custom Client Journey because my passion is helping small businesses. I love entrepreneurship. I love the solopreneur, the serial entrepreneur. Anybody who wants to start their own business, who has this vision or this need or this just desire to serve, I want to help you guys. Um, so that is my gift to this world, and I'm really excited to be able to share it with you today. So let's get started. Um, so here, what are we looking at, folks? We are looking at an electric toothbrush. I'm sure that you've heard of it. But in... Um, 1950 or so, and I hope you realize that was 70 years ago. Um, to me, that seems more like 40 years ago because I think I'm stuck in the 1990s, but yeah, that was 70 years ago. 
But in 1950, this electric toothbrush, this had never been imagined. It was absurd. People would be thinking, how in the heck are you going to have an automatic toothbrush? Well, the innovators knew what they were doing. And then it was invented. Philip Woog actually is the person who invented the electric toothbrush in 1954. But up until then, most people hadn't even probably considered that you could automate a toothbrush. But now it seems pretty obvious, right? So that kind of, why didn't I think of that moment is exactly what we're hoping to achieve with this presentation. I love those moments. And those are the moments of clarity and a path being revealed to you when you come upon an idea like this that you're like, why didn't I think of that? I can do this and here's how I can do this in my own business. So in the next few minutes, I hope that you're going to discover a few ways to use some new automation in your business that you've never thought of before or that you never knew how to implement. So let's get started with that. Um, the customer life cycle or the customer journey is the pathway that nearly every consumer takes in an ideal world. Lucky for you folks on this webinar, however, most businesses stop short after step two. They miss ripe opportunities to wow their customer after the purchase, and they develop no real loyalty except through product performance or brand preference. If you can wow your customers on a regular basis, you are going to get that repeat business that other businesses are falling short of getting because there's no aftercare and that aftercare can be beautifully automated in a way that it doesn't seem like it's an automation to your customer. And that's the whole idea of automation. We are not looking to send people canned responses. We're looking to automatically generate an avenue of communication between you and your customer. And whether that is a question that you're posing to the customer or a need that they have, there's so many ways that you can incorporate uh, incorporate automation into that. Um, it's just kind of ridiculous. And I want to show you some of those ways. But at the end of this, there's also a book I'm going to give you that is uh, 25 different suggestions for automation. So we're just covering six here. But afterwards, you'll be able to get a hold of the ebook for 25 ways to automate. And that is, of course, absolutely free to you guys. Um, so let's start at the customer life cycle with the attraction point of the life cycle. So this is where you're going out, you are attracting your customers to you, and you are capturing their information so you can follow up with them. Um, so here in this first automation that we have, we're going to be using the customers that you already have to get new customers. So this is a referral campaign using automation. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do this. So you're probably aware that it's cheaper to sell to an existing customer than it is to acquire a brand new customer. You probably also know that word of mouth advertising is some of the most influential kind of marketing available. You can't get a better, more solid recommendation or a solid avenue into your business for a client you don't know than a client that you have that is happy sharing that information with them or directing you to these people that need help that they know. So how can you leverage this to generate more leads? The way to do this is you ask your happy customers your happiest customers, your most satisfied people to give you that referral. A happy customer is clearly happy with the product or the service that they received. So they're most likely already sharing their experiences with friends. And those friends are actually warm leads and warm leads are much easier to close. Okay. So you can use automation to determine which of your customers are happy by giving them a quick survey. When the people get the survey that you're going to send out, they're going to share with you their satisfaction. You can ask them any kinds of questions that you want. And bearing on those responses, you'll ask for a referral from the people that are happiest. So it seems pretty simple, right? It, it really is. Um, this 
is what that campaign might look like. So here what you're going to have is a satisfied customer. You've sent the referral out or you sent the survey out to them. They've responded to your survey and whatever system that you have has scored that survey and tagged that customer as being a satisfied customer. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to gather up the ones who give you the highest score. You can give them a tag or some kind of uh, lead into the sequence here. And then you email the customer after you have received their survey based on their happiness and you ask them to enter. You email them and you ask them to enter into a form or to respond to your email with someone that they know who might be interested in your services. Um, that's the middle part here where it's asking for the customer referral. The next step is for the customer, ideally, to go fill out a form. Uh, if they reply to you, that's perfectly fine if that's how you want to work this, but that's not going to automate this to the fullest extent that it can be done. So let's say that you have, after you've received their survey, you're sending them a form to fill out a customer referral. You will, of course, offer incentives to your customer. Hey, um, give us five referrals and you know, win this swag prize. You know, maybe it's a tablet or enter, be entered into a drawing to win a MacBook or a tablet or a $20 gift from Amazon or a t-shirt. Um, there's tons of things that you can reward your customers with. Coupons are great. Um, but you want to reward them for giving you a referral and giving them and give them that incentive to really share their experience with their friends. And then in this sequence here, after they fill out that form, a task is triggered to your team to automatically place a call to the new referral or to reach out to them in whatever manner your company would reach out to them. So you might have a customer referral form come in and it is for John Smith on Blueberry Drive and here's his phone number. Maybe your customer, your uh, business initially will send out an email to them. I would recommend doing phone call um, or even a text or something like that. And be sure to have your customer in that customer referral form, advise them to let their friends know that we you as your business will be contacting them. That way it's not unexpected, it doesn't seem like spam or they don't just ignore your phone number because they don't know who you are. That's a tactic that so many people use these days. So being a little bit known to them uh, before will be helpful. You can even warm up your uh, new referrals by mailing them, mailing them a gift, mailing them a packet of information saying with a letter that says, your friend identify your customer thought that you may be interested in our services here's what we offer how can we help you out um things like that are fantastic so asking for referrals from your most satisfied customers is definitely a great way to uh, create an automation that will help you bring in free or nearly free warm leads into your business all right, so the next one, the next situation we have here is to validate your targeting. Now, this may sound a little bit odd, but bear with me here for a second. So the first thing you have to do when you're strategizing about how to acquire a new customer is to get abundantly clear on exactly who is in your target market, right? And so you're probably thinking to yourself, well, is this creating a customer avatar? Is this going out and running Facebook ads to see what kind of audience I get the best response from? No, it's not. This is actually going to be leveraging your current data in your current list to validate your targeting and to offer you some suggestions for your targeting. So if you ask yourself who your target market is, don't give me the answer of everyone because not everybody wants your service, or needs it, cares about it, or will purchase. So let's get past that market to everyone um, shotgun approach to something. What we need is something that's 
precisely targeted much more like if we're going to continue with a shotgun uh, reference here, much more like you know a rifle or a pistol where you can aim and hit a specific target. So in other words, you have to have a clear target. You have to have an exact target in mind for your marketing to be effective. Throwing out that broad net is not going to get you a good return on your investment or good ROIs or good click-through rates or anything like that. You're going to need to be targeted. So using the current list that you have, um, you can start to develop a better insight into your targeting. Now, is it possible you can have more than one target? Sure. I mean, McDonald's is definitely targeting kids with its Happy Meals as well as adults people wanting to eat healthier with their new, with some of their salad options and different burger options that they're having now. Um, but each kind of client that McDonald's targets is going to have a different message shared with them. So how do you know if it's the right message or if it's the right target even? One method, if you already have a customer database, which I'm assuming you do, is to validate your current targeting hypothesis against your best customers. How do we do this? It's similar to the previous way to use automation in that we're leveraging your customers for lead generation. I know that's weird, right? But it works. You want to take your existing targeting features and build some kind of survey that inquires about those features and automatically administer it to your best customers. Again, these are your happy referrals. These are people who keep coming back to your business for more. Um, these are customers that show you that they're into you and that they're loyal customers. So for example, let's pretend that you've been targeting single females with a college degree, okay? You can build a survey that finds out your customer's gender, marital status, and level of education, and those are your targeting features. Now, let's pretend you find your most engaged customers, most email opens, clicks, highest dollar amount, and so on, dig those people out of your database, and you're gonna automatically deliver them this survey that you created with those specific questions. Now, if you find out that most of your best customers are married guys with a high school degree, that tells you that your targeting is actually way off and you can adjust your marketing to cater to those types instead. Or maybe most of your customers are indeed single females with a college degree, in either case, you've just used automation to validate or invalidate your targeting hypothesis. So it's pretty simple. Um, from there, you'll want to take those findings and of course use them to guide your messaging in your future lead gen efforts. Um, and it's a pretty simple way, it's a pretty simple campaign to do. So this is what that campaign may look like. Uh, first, you're going to create your survey form. You're going to ask the questions that you want to know about your audience. Like, are you male or female? What's your age? Are you married? You know, do you like to mountain bike? Whatever it is that you want to know about your customers, just ask them. Um, I know in Infusionsoft, the survey forms that we use here, we can ask a question and depending on the answer of each question, we can apply a tag to that customer. We then use those tags to formulate reports and you can get a whole list of, say, your customers that are single females who like mountain biking, who live in Oregon. You can pull that kind of targeted list up and use that as a lookalike audience in Facebook or anything like that. So going back to this um, campaign here, after you've done that survey and you've sent it out, um, you can thank them, you can reward them, you can tell your customers they are absolute rock stars for answering your survey, and so on. You wanna do something at the end of each interaction with any customer that you have to wow them. So if you're asking them for some time, if you're asking them for some answers, Give them a reward, give them a way to go, give them a high five, whatever you want to do, but thank them. Let them know that you care and you're grateful that they took their time to help you in your business and to make your business a little bit better. All right, so 
moving on here, we're about 20 minutes in, we are going to go to ways that automation can help you with selling. And this consists of different ways you can educate, offer, and close a lead in order to generate a customer. So I know that's something we're all excited about, closing those leads, turning them into customers, turning them into raving fans. So the first offering I have here for this is simulating real email interactions to sell. Okay. If you've been following the big internet marketing guys for any amount of time, you may have seen them use a tactic that nearly every small business can leverage. And that is this. The general idea is to simulate a sales conversation when someone is toward the bottom of your sales funnel. So that means your lead is fully educated on the value of your product and your service. They know who you are. They know what you stand for. They know what you're selling. And they are primed for a sales pitch. So how do these sales conversations via email usually work? Well, it's simple. A sales rep types out an email and tells the lead to reply if they want some more information. And you can rearrange that however you want. And, but this is where we can use the automation. There are systems that can automatically receive an incoming email extract certain information from it and then trigger some automation. In other words, when someone sends an email to a specific email address, it can cause something to automatically happen. So here is how you would do this. First, you're gonna to need to make sure that you have a live order form or shopping cart form for the product that you're going to be pitching to your customer in this email. You wanna make sure that you have the means for them to purchase the product uh, online before you start this automation. Um, next, see, you're going to send an email to the leads that are toward the end of that cycle there. You may have them in a group if you've got a campaign going, or you may just have uh, one-off triggers. Say you have a tag applied to somebody when they reach a certain stage, and that can trigger this uh, simulated conversation to go to that customer. So you're going to ask them, you're going to email them, and then you're going to ask them to reply to a specific email address for more information. You're not going to have a link or anything. You're just going to have a call to action saying, email this specific inbox, inbox for more information. You can actually um, I know with Infusionsoft and probably just about any other CRM, you can put a button in that email, which is a reply to. So they would click there to reply to that specific email address to get more information. Now, what happens is that once that customer replies to that address, they're going to get another email back automatically, you know, have it wait 10 minutes or something like that. So, or however long it would probably take for a person to actually write out the information that you're sending to them. Um, if it's long and involved, you may want to wait an hour. If it's just a short blurb with a link, you know, you can have it wait five minutes. The delay timers like that are really useful. So once they apply to that address, they're going to get your response at whatever time you want to send that. And that response is going to attempt to close on the offering and drive the recipient to an order form or your shopping cart. Okay. So this kind of invisible selling, you can see my air quotes there, is really effective because it avoids burning out your list with a bunch of um, sales pitches. And it allows those people who are just only those people who are truly interested in your product to um, get this email and get this opportunity. So you know that your close rate on these kind of emails with a hot lead is gonna be really high, okay? If you really wanna get slick with it, you can um, use that reply to address um, to create a whole new funnel. Maybe it sends out one email to them with this interaction, and then if they don't click on it, sends them another email like the next day 
from this email address, you know, with a regarding in the subject line and whatever the subject line of the email you sent them the day before, and just have um, a first line saying, hey, checking in on, checking in to make sure you got this email, let me know what you think. Um, little nudges like you might do to a real person who you're waiting on information from, that'll really help that look like a personalized campaign. So this is what that campaign might look like um, in Infusionsoft here. So first, your lead is gonna come from another email sequence or perhaps from viewing a product on your website or possibly clicking a send me more information request somewhere. They're going to have indica indicated to you that they are really interested in this product somehow. You're gonna get that indication of interest and that click that tells you that they're interested is gonna trigger an email being sent to the lead from that specific address. So the email sent to the lead will give them the information you promise in your call to action, whether it's an order form, an appointment, more info on a product or a procedure or something like that, or it can also be a brief sales funnel for the leads that are super hot. And after the sales com is complete, the lead is gonna be pulled from that funnel. So what you're looking at here is an actual tag um, sorry, that's cut off at the ends there, but you have tagged the client with or the lead with interest in your product. They want more information. They go to the sequence where you email the client with the offer. And you can have as many follow up emails in here as you want. I would recommend no more than three. I mean, you don't want to bug them to death. But the beauty of this sequence is that when they purchase that product, that little shopping cart goal at the end, they're going to be pulled out of the sequence. So they stop getting those emails. I know um, I find it super annoying when I'm dealing with a company who doesn't know what I've done with them. Um, just a recent example in my life is a jujitsu gym here uh, around me locally. I've been in the jiu-jitsu class for a couple months now. And I'm still getting emails from them about signing up for my free class and why to join. So I, you know, I've even mentioned it to the owner a few times and he hasn't fixed anything. But that to me tells me as a consumer that this is a completely automated thing. Hands are off. He's not paying any attention to the sequence. So you want to make sure that your customers stop getting emails when they need to stop get when they need to be stopped. So that's pretty important in just about any campaign. All right. So moving on to number four, I think this is one of my favorite ones. When I was growing up, I was a real bookworm. Okay. And I still am actually, but I was a voracious reader by the age of six. Do you guys remember these choose your own adventure books? I mean, I remember these. I had these books. Uh, I especially remember the haunted house one. Um, just those were so much fun. You could read them over and over and the ending would be different every single time. So, you know, it just kept, it keeps you interested. It keeps you going because everything, every path you go down in the book, it's a choice that you've made, okay? So, you know, you've got, this is a great scene. This is the uh, the Rancor, right? It's attacking you. You, let me read this quote here, right? It's, the Rancor is attacking you. Across the bone-filled pit, you see an electric door locked, your only escape. To pick up a bone and fight the Rancor off, turn to page 33. To throw a rock at the, Doors lock, turn to page 45. Okay, so you've got options there. Now, it's like you're writing the story as you read it. It's really immersive experience. So using this same tactic, and I am not suggesting sending rancors to uh, force your clients to choose whether they're going to throw a rock at you or if they're going to grab a bone. However, I recommend creating an adventure selling sequence, something like this. So here we've got this pest control company right and they've got scorpions or what is that spiders termites so you imagine if you're a pest control company and you have education about 
scorpions, scorpion infestations or termite infestations in your home. Just two subjects out of the many that there could be. When you acquire a new lead, again, you're gonna be using really super targeted marketing. So you're going to have an idea of what your client is looking for when they're coming in. If they're responding to an ad, do you need pest control in your home? Um, you know, or termites got you down. You know that they wanna know about these in-home specific kinds of pests. So after you have their permission to email, you can ask them what they want to learn about, okay? So you can pose a question with two different links in your email or however many you want. You can really, you can create 10 choices if you want to, although I recommend keeping that um, a little bit narrower because overwhelming con a consumer with choices leads to brain freeze and we just sit there and we're like, I don't know, and I close the email. So keep your list short, but relevant to them. So, all right, they're gonna click on, I wanna learn about scorpions or I wanna learn about termites. All right, then if they select scorpions, that's going to tag them or put them into the scorpion sequence. If they choose termites, it's going to go into the termite sequence. All right, so, if they prefer termite information, you're gonna send them the termite stuff. So it's just like the books. You have power to give them the content they're actually asking you for through their choices. So using this same pest control example, after that initial series comes out, you can offer them another choice of content. So say they've gone all through your termite sequence and now your final email is going to ask them, well, so now you've learned about termites. Do you want to learn, and this is just a simple example, do you want to learn about our how we can control your pest problem in your home? Or would you like to learn about do-it-yourself options? I love this particular strategy. And let me tell you why. You're probably thinking, well, if I tell them how to do it themselves, they're not going to buy my product. But on the contrary, tell them how to do it themselves and show them how complex it is. Show them how they can do it and it will take them, you know, getting, buying all this equipment, going and buying the pest control products, applying them to their home, making sure they're using safety equipment correctly and not contaminating their home. Uh, I'm not an expert in pest control, so I don't really know what the the lingo is there. But if you show them how to do it themselves in a way that will make them want to let you do it, that's fantastic. So you can give them those options. And even at the end of, if you're giving them a sequence on how to do it themselves, you know, maybe you have one email on which product to go purchase to start your pest control if you need a sprayer or the actual pesticide or whatever and then give them some complexity around that give them numerous options and deciding factors and then at the bottom of that email you can put in there a link to say if you've decided you don't want to do this yourself if this is a little much for you contact us we're happy to help you out and you can incorporate that into any of those DIY series all right so this is how that campaign could look um, in Infusionsoft here. So here we have the web form that they'll submit when they opt in. And this web, web form can be just as simple as their name and email address, or it can be a qualifying form where they're checking off interests that they have. I really recommend a qualifying lead form unless you're just going for sheer volume. Um, Again, this is just referring back to our targeting. If we have a more targeted list, we know more about their interests, we're gonna be able to sell to them better. You're gonna be able to make more money and they're gonna be happier in the end because they have what they want. So, all right, so your lead comes in from that web form. And the second step you're gonna take in that email one interested in ARB is you're going to send them this email with the question just like I asked earlier, are you interested in scorpions? Are you interested in termites? And then whichever choice they choose, write it that uh, diamond there, that's called a decision diamond. 
in Infusionsoft. And what it does is if people click on one link, it routes them to product A. If they click on another link, it routes them to product B. You can have as many choices there as you want. And then, like I was just saying about the self-service versus full service, at the end of any of these sequences, you can attach another decision diamond and say, okay, at this point, do you want to learn about A, B, or C? And then keep that going on. So that's a way to really drill down into what they want and to learn so much about your customer base. If you can see that you've got this great customer base and you're offering termite control and scorpion control, and you realize that 75% of your database is in your campaign for termite control, then you might have a better idea of where you need to focus your business on and how to make some more money. Um, so that is, that is probably my favorite method. Um, I'm happy to be able to get to share that with you. All right, so next, I see we've got about 20 minutes left here, so I'm gonna make this quick. Um, the last part is the wow. And like I said at the beginning of this webinar, the wow is where so many businesses drop the ball. Most businesses get your money, they give you their product, and then they may continue to send you emails about sales, but they're not wowing you. They're not taking that extra step to take care of you and to see what else you need, to see what other services you need or what other things that can be provided for you. So the first method of these two that I'm gonna show you here is automated, automated testimonial collection. Um, it's very similar to the referrals and you can use some of that automation in there that you've set up. If you set up that referrals campaign, you can use some of that in the automated, automated uh, testimonial collection. So it's pretty easy. Um, but word of mouth advertising in any way, whether it's testimonials or referrals or, you know, however customers are sharing their experiences with your company, those are the most influential types of marketing because social proof is very highly regarded in today's society. If you know that you're the only one doing business with this company in your city, then you probably are having some questions about the service. I mean, is this company a good company? Are they legitimate? Do they stand behind their product? So the more social proof that you can garner for your presence and for your business is just going to help you to move forward with any kind of customer. So sometimes you get a testimony, of course, that comes in randomly from a satisfied customer. Some people are proactive like that. And I find that small business owners and other business owners are actually the people that tend to do that more because they know the value of it. But most consumers aren't going to just offer you a testimony without you actually asking them for it. So here's what that kind of looks like. What you're going to do is this is very similar to the first campaign I showed you. You're going to ask your happy customers. Again, we love our happy customers. Um, once you've identified who they are, you're going to ask them for a testimonial automatically, very much like we did in the first one with asking for the referral. Okay. So you can make it a closed loop process if you want by collecting the, the testimonial via a web form. That's really a great way to do it. Um, and by doing it that way, you can use automation to ask them for a testimonial several times um, until they either do it or your three emails to them or whatever has run out. So again, that's stopping a customer when they need to be stopped in the sequence by pulling them out once they've given you the testimonial or when time has run out, then they're just not gonna get any more emails. So once we have set that up, we can automatically, again, thank them for their contribution and drive them somewhere else. You know, can I offer them a coupon for another purchase as a way of saying thanks? Can I send you a t-shirt? And t-shirt and swag, guys, is great. You get their t-shirt size and ask for their size. Don't just automatically send everybody a large shirt. Um, my husband is a big and tall guy. 
and he never gets swag that will fit him. So ask, you know, care about your customer enough to ask what their preferences are, what their size is, uh, you know, what color do they prefer, whatever you're sending out in any way that you can customize that, customize it to their preferences. Um, that's a, just another wow factor for them. Okay. So this is what that is going to look like um, in Infusion stuff. So again, we have the customer feedback tag. They're satisfied with their purchase. You get this from that same survey that we sent out in the first referral request. Okay. So you'll already have this information. And then you probably don't want to send out a referral request and a testimonial request at the same time. Um, that's a little bit too much to send to a customer, but I would use one or the other or stagger these. Um, you can ask for referrals even directly at closing or right after the purchase and then wait two weeks and, you know, have some communication with them to do, you know, this is how to use your product. This is, you know, how to get the most out of what you're using. And then after that campaign has run to keep them satisfied and to keep them still engaged with your product and their new purchase, you can ask them for a testimonial. Or you can switch that around, you know, whatever makes more sense for your business. I wouldn't run them simultaneously, but each has a great place in your campaign. So in the middle here, we have a testimonial request. This is just a two email series. It can be one email, it can be three, whatever you want to do. And then there's that form, the testimonial request landing page submitted. That's the form that they go to to fill out their testimonial. Um, if you can get your customers to do a video testimonial, like just on their phone, those are fantastic. Written testimonials, have them submit a picture of themselves or a picture of their product. Um, ask them on the form for anything that you want or that you can think of that's creative that will help you really show the rest of the world your customers satisfaction and how you treat your customers okay and then of course when it's when they've submitted that testimonial in the next portion of the campaign here you can uh actually create a task for one of your team members to go and put that testimonial up on your blog or your social page or wherever you want to place that. Okay, so it's um, just boom, 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 and it's automated. And you'll find yourself not losing those. I know that I have some customers that have lost that so many communications and testimonials because they're just not doing things in a timely manner. Having a task at the end of this campaign definitely lets you do things um, in a timely and consistent way. That's one of the beauties of automation. It doesn't get sick. It doesn't go on vacation. It doesn't call off. It doesn't get the coronavirus. So <laughs> that's kind of the beauty of these systems. Um, so the next one and the final one that we have to you is how to automatically send cool things to a new customer. Again, I know I've been touting swag. I love swag. I have so much swag from Infusionsoft and Keep and ClickFunnels and Monkey Power Marketing and all these guys. And I wear it proudly. I love these things. Um, I could probably go for a couple weeks just wearing t-shirts that I've gotten at trade shows, but it's fun. So you can actually automate the fulfillment of pretty much any physical product or a coupon or a gift certificate or anything like that um, pretty easily. So there's, I know there's a couple different ways that things can be fulfilled. I'm going to focus on uh, physical fulfillment in this example here, but this can very easily be done with an email sequence and a gift certificate or, you know, an email sequence and Send them, I know some places have these gift sites where they send a customer, choose your gift and it'll be sent to you. You can definitely do that through email. But for a physical, excuse me, physical fulfillment, um, I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So brownies, like I've gotten these brownies from uh, a service and I don't even remember what it was. It was fairy tale 
collections or something like that. And it came in this really lovely, solid purple box that had a really smooth finish. And it was just a great box. And I've kept that box for like five years because I loved it so much. And I keep um, checkbooks in there now. So having something classy, something reusable, obviously you can't reuse the brownies, but you can reuse the container. Um, something to keep your name in front of them at all times is gonna be really good for your business. So, you know, who doesn't have a sweet tooth every once in a while? I know some people are very strictly, you know, on a very strict diet or something like that, but the majority of people will appreciate a box of brownies or cookies or, uh, you know, a mix or a bottle of wine or, you know, something like that. There's lots of things to choose from out there. So think of yourself as a consumer. You know, when I got that fairy tale collections box and I think mine had cookies in it, it may have been brownies, but I think it was cookies. Um, you know, I ate the cookies, I shared the cookies with my family, um, but it was really a great gesture and it made me feel like the company was prosperous. It made me feel like the company was trustworthy and that they want to impress me and work with me. So those were really positive feelings that came out of a delivery, which may have cost the company 20 bucks or 30 bucks, whatever, a small price to pay. So imagine how your customers are going to feel when they get this awesome piece of swag for you or awesome gift from you just for being their customer. So, you know, food, it doesn't have to be food. Of course, there's edible arrangements, there's Starbucks gift cards, there's Amazon gift cards and swag. Socks are awesome. Everybody loves socks for some reason, and they're fun. I have lots of infusion soft socks, if you can imagine that, but I love them. They're great. So you can automate the sending of whatever you choose to your customers. Um, and this is really pretty simple. This is what that would look like. So first, your customer is going to be tagged as a new customer when they purchase, right? You can create this tag based only on certain purchases, like high ticket items if you want, or whatever product you want it on. Whenever somebody has given you money for something, you can have this new customer tag applied, or you can only apply it to certain things. Secondly, that tag, whatever it is that you apply to the customer, is going to trigger an email to them. And it's that email is just going to let them know you know, hey, thanks for being a part of our company and making the choice to go with our company versus all of our competitors. We know that was a conscious choice you had to make. We're grateful for it. Thank you for choosing us. And you might tell them there's going to be a gift in the mail for them or to expect a surprise or something like that. And then after that email goes out, inside that add to fulfillment is... Um, a trigger that actually creates physical fulfillment lists that you can either submit one off to whatever company you're shipping from, or you can submit in bulk lists, depending again on the company that you're using. You know, if you're sending gifts to people through Amazon, you'll probably have to do them one at a time. If you're sending gifts from, you know, a t-shirt printing company, you may be able to submit the whole list to them. It just it just depends on what you're offering. But that fulfillment here, whether it's digital or physical, can be triggered and fulfilled within that sequence right there. And then once that gift is given to them, you may have an internal form for one of your team members, your uh, fulfillment expert, to fill out once they've sent them something to let to put a note on their account about what they've sent them and maybe trigger an automated email. Hey, here's your tracking number for your gift. Or if you want it to be a surprise, you know, don't do that. But um, those forms can be used to actually record any kind of information that you want to about your customer. All right, guys. So that's about it. You know, all in all, there's many different things you can do to automate your business throughout the whole life cycle of the customer. Um, the key, of course, is first understanding what 
your existing processes, if you have one, and then automating it once you get super clear on what can and can't be automated. In most cases, with a little you know ingenuity here, you can fully automate just about any anything that you want to automate. Um, so we reviewed these. What do you guys like? What was the most interesting thing to you? Um, hit me up in the chat box if you want to let me know. Um, was it asking your happy customers, validating your targeting, simulating the email interactions to sell, choosing your own adventure selling, automate testimonial collection, or automatically sending cool things to a new customer? I want to know what interests you most, okay? So what, what can you start automating today? You know, what can you do now with this? Well, I have a couple things to help you out here. So first of all, I wanna give you a head start and I wanna just give you this guide. It's totally free. It's 25 things every business should automate. Go to this bit.ly link here. It's https colon slash slash bit dot ly forward slash two W Z S seven capital A capital C. Um, that'll get that uh, ebook sent right to you, and you can start using any of the automation things in there. And if you have any questions, of course, contact me. Let me know. Um, I'm always going to recommend Keep um, for for most things. It really helps you to always organize your client information to follow up, to close more leads, to automate your daily work, to get paid. And of course, there's impressing your clients. Um, and you can do this all with a 14-day trial if you're interested. Um, if you are, click on this link here in the slide that is going to show up. There it is. And you can get a 14-day free trial on me. Um, of course, you don't have to use Infusionsoft to do this. You can automate any of these sequences in your current CRM. And if you have questions about that, I may be able to help you. I'm familiar with some of them. Um, and if not, you can take this presentation and you can show somebody who's an expert in your CRM and ask them how to do this. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to reach out for help. So if you already have Infusionsoft or you plan on getting that free trial, because you've watched this webinar, I am going to give you any of those campaigns that you saw in, in the presentation here today. So you will get a free installation and customization of any of the campaigns that I showed you here today. Um, I can create those campaigns for you and simply install them into your app and then you can be off and running with them. It's pretty easy to do. So if you want me to do that, go to customclientjourney.com and go to contact, I'm sorry, there should be a .com in there, customclientjourney.com forward slash contact. Um, contact me, let me know you want me to do that or how I can help you. And that's it. I'm not gonna give you guys a big pitch. I wanna help you. I want your businesses to be run as smoothly as they can be. I want your customers to be happy. I want us to be out there serving this world that needs good, heartfelt, honest, small businesses and entrepreneurs like you looking out for them and giving them the best experiences that we can give them. So thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for sharing your time with me today and spending this hour with me here as I share this with you. And as always, keep going, keep serving and keep growing. You guys have a fantastic day. Thank you.